Pelicans 124, Hornets 112 on this Friday night, joined with Lito and Ross. The Pelicans are 2-0 and for the first time since 2018. And to be honest with you, that's pretty insane. But the last two games, they have never trailed in the last 96 minutes. Um, they haven't trailed for a second. Ross, uh, really? never trailed. It's an impressive stat. Second. I like that. Let's let's talk. Let's get into it. Jonas Valanciunas for us. I mean, you want to talk about a guy that's underappreciated? It's Jonas Valanciunas. 30 points, 17 rebounds, 8 of 11 from the field, 13 of 14 from the free throw line. Yeah, what you saw tonight was is, I think, one of the things that's going to make this team really – and we talked a little bit about it before the season started, but it's one of the things that's going to make the team really, really tough. And it's the fact that, okay, night one, be eyes eye on, go, go crazy. Night two, Valanchunas goes nuts. B.I. goes nuts. It's just everybody wants to talk about Brandon and Zion. There's four really, really good offensive players on this team. Four, not just yeah. two. There's not just four, three, four. And tonight you saw what happens when they were clearly a concerted effort to, yeah, I won't say pack the paint, but I mean, they were clearly a, a bigger focus on stopping Zion and making sure B.I. didn't get his. Brandon still got his. Valanchunas went ape, ape shit. I and mean, that's Lito. what's going to happen. He's a good offensive player, man. Lito, I mean, you know, he's a he's a great offensive player. This is, I mean, he's he's a double double machine. Lito, he at some points I just simply played bully ball. I've been a fan of Jonas since he was in Toronto. I I was scared that him coming on this team, not not coming him coming on this, but him being on this team, getting who we got back, you know, having a firepower that we currently have. I th- I felt like we were going. to Forget about him, right? And and that and that was honestly, man. Basketball is so simple. Just throw it into the bigger, stronger man. And he it's not even like he's big and strong, and he's a brute. Like he's he's got finesse. He got you know touch around the rim. He's got fadeaway. He got good footwork, and he's a hell of a passer. Like I think you know, like I understand it's, it's only been two games, but I would love for him to just stay very involved. And here's the other thing. Larry Nance, I know we're not on Larry Nance, but this goes for all the bigs, right? When you're under the rim and you get a rebound, like, we don't have to kick it off for the three. Like, you could just go right back up. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I got the box score over here. And Brandon Ingram had 28, Quiet. nine, and Quiet. seven. Quiet. Quiet. Nine rebounds and seven assists. Two Quiet. steals. Bro, Wait. I said that before we started this podcast. I saw that, and I was like, God damn, that was quiet. That was extremely quiet. Listen, Ross, if he's going to bring on the defensive side of the ball, too, I mean, nine rebounds, seven assists, two steals, he's a plus 23. I'm, That's... Glad, I'm glad you brought that up because there was a point in the game. That one Probably, look, we scored 124 points. We were impressive as hell on that. And again, there was a, a little spot in the second quarter, and I'm trying to find it, but it was about midway through the second quarter where they cut it to I think four, like maybe yeah. 46, 42 or whatever. I believe the next possession down, B.I. gets a block or a tip. We go down, we get a bucket. I think Zion checks back in. I think Valanchunas gets a block. We get up, we go down, I think C.J. gets a bucket and then makes a free throw. We go down, we get another stop. I think a steal. Um, go down, get another bucket. We stretch it immediately back out to 12 or 13 or something in probably a minute and a half stretch. And that, to me, showed me the progression of a team. Because there were points in this game where we just went back and forth, bucket for bucket, playing kind of quick. And that's great. We're going to score with the best teams in the league. I saw in that two, three-minute stretch a concerted effort to, hey, let's the buck stops here. They, they got it from 11 down to four. Let's lock in again. And in the regular season, that's all you need. It's, it's, not, right. it's not about playing – I mean, this sounds bad to say, but let's just be honest. It's not about every minute – every second of every game locking in on D it's just not going to happen for a whole regular season, but whether it be late in the fourth quarter during a little run like that, you got to be able to flip the switch. Hey, yeah. it's time to lock in and get three or four stops in a row right here. And when we did that, that showed me we, we got what it takes at any point in this game to do what we have to do. And so <clears throat> that started with BI though, to, to back to your point was yeah. him getting that, that tip playing hard defense. He's a different player, right? Yeah, and, and Lito, we, we talked about this. I think we saw in the preseason in, in the game, he came back against the Hawks in Birmingham, and we noticed you know, later on um, last season, but effort 
on the defensive side of the ball uh, has been way better. And, and Brandon, we ask him, you know, he needs to be a better shooter, a better passer, a better rebounder. Every year he gets better. And this, th- these last two set lines have been unbelievable. You know, I think Nick Wright came out today. He wants to be the number one. No, like, fuck that. He wants to win games, and he's showing me in that box where he wants to win games. I, first of all, I've never listened to anything Nick Wright has to say like that. We could just, we could just start there on that. Um, he is, I'm going to tell you one thing I learned as far as like the last game um, versus Brooklyn, you know, after the game, um, the interview with Zion, with BI, uh, with Jen Hale, mm-hmm. and they were just kind of talking about, you know, they were standing side by side and Zion said, we don't care who scores the most points. We don't care who has takes the most shots. We just want to win. So, you know, if your two best players are going to take on that mindset, then, you know, who who can concur, who can you know, who else on the team can cry about not getting the ball? You know what I'm saying? Like who who can make a case of like I'm not getting enough touches? Like, nah, right. you you got you got a guy in BI, and when it's time to get BI involved, like BI's been involved. He he he'll, he'll I I've seen it, it it was a play or two plays this this season so far where I saw him get frustrated because he wanted the ball at a certain spot. And we got it like a beat too late, but then you know he ended up getting it, getting it later in the possession or on the next possession. He was the focus of that possession. But yeah, no nah, man, he's he's in a special place right now. He he's in a hell of a hell of a zone. Like he he made some defensive plays tonight. And and listen, like Ross said, the thing about this game is it was frustrating for as you, if you're a fan of the team because you would think you know Lamelo's not playing. They don't have uh, Bridges. You would think that you know, you would come in and just run them off the floor. But, like, you know, you can't do that to every team. And the makings of a great team, you know, beating the teams you were supposed to beat. Yeah. And and, and listen, every night's not going to be this 20-point win in Brooklyn. Like, I think Chaz said it today, and we've all been saying it. Like, you have to show up in Charlotte. And listen, in the NBA, all you have to do is win. They won. And was it pretty at all times? No. Did Zion have a, you know, a blockbuster night? No. But the, the whole point of this is to win basketball games, is that, and that's what they did. Uh, Lito, I'm going to start with you here in my notes. Um, I want to talk about two things about Herb Jones because I, I feel I feel like he gets lost in the mix for some odd reason, but he's like one of the most important players on this team. Herb Jones, I think in it might have been late second quarter, uh, Zion was getting hit, and I think Zion had like a tough finish. Maybe it was a third. Uh, second or third quarter, Zion finished it, doesn't get a foul call. And Herb <laughs> Jones speaks up for Zion Williamson and gets teed up. Uh, one, that goes a long way in the locker room. I think I tweeted that out that, that kind of support for Zion uh, goes a long way in the locker room. And that's Herb Jones doing that as a second year guy, some guy he's never even played with. And he's doing that. And then the, the next point I wanted to make Lito is he had two big buckets in the fourth quarter. He had a slot cut and one. And then he yeah. had, I think it was, I think I mean, it was ridiculous open court on the right hand side. Of the the left. He yeah. kind of like, yeah, hit him with a Rondo a little bit and spun it in. Uh, talk to me about Herb because he's not talked about enough. You said Herb is a second year player. I told you last time we did a pod, Herb is Scottie Pippen reincarnated. He's not just a second year player. He's he's been here before. He's an old soul, man. He's just an old soul. Um Herb Jones is we were texting during the game, and I told you Herb's new nickname. Oh, it's a terrible company, and I hate to say this, but Herb New Jones, his Herb Jones' new nickname is Sewage and Waterboy. Because when you got it going, when you got it going. He just go cut your water off. He go cut that shit off. He go turn the he go turn the knob. It's over. You out of here. You know what I'm saying? Her 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 herb is a herb. All her wants to do is guard the best player on the other team. That's all he wants to do. I just I just want to make your life a living hell. I want I want I want I want you to have a terrible time playing basketball, bro. You know how hard it is to have a terrible time playing basketball, mm. like. When her, you know what I'm saying? But when Herb Jones is only you, like, that's what you that's what you're gonna have. Yeah. Uh Ross, he's a second year player. He scores seven points. Here's what people when people don't watch Pelicans games, is what pisses me off because they'll look at Herb and they'll be like, oh, he only had seven points. He's a different maker. He's a I don't care if he scores zero points. I literally don't care. He's a yeah, different maker. It's, it's not what he's out there to do. I mean, he I, it, what's interesting is that we all obviously saw him pick up that tech. I think that was as much 
about her as it was about Zion. I, I think, you know, everybody's mm-hmm. going to look at it, and you did too, and say, you know, he's sticking up for his teammate. And look, he is. He, he is right there. But that was as much or more him saying to the ref, I'm tired of y'all hitting me with the little ticky-tack fouls. Because he had four, I mean, soft, soft fouls again tonight. And I think that was his way of saying, yeah, look, my guy's getting hit over here and we're not getting it. But, like, if y'all are going to call that soft little stuff on me, it's time to go ahead and call it when the big guy's getting hammered down there. And so I, that was his – I think that was his way of saying, I'm frustrated about the way I'm being officiated on the other end. And so I'm glad to see – I mean, look, they talked about it a little bit on the broadcast about, you know, telling Zion you've got to be more assertive with the officials – I think the same thing goes for her. If you're going to be looked at as a guy that's a first-team all-defense player, you're going to do some of the things he's doing, the guys he's guarding, he's going to have to kind of do the same thing we've been saying about Zion on the other end. Like, mm-hmm. that's not a foul. You're going to have to let me – I mean, look, good off to players initiate more contact than the defenders ever do. And I think he's kind of learning, and there's, there's a little bit of frustration there. Um, I mean, I thought some of the fouls he picked up tonight were just, just nonsense. Yeah, and I agree. And then um, it, it, it continues to happen with her. But I think when you continue to keep playing, playing, he'll get more respect. Uh, one of the last points I want to make, uh, once again, presented by Company Burger, located at 4600 Ferret Street. Uh, you know, Lito, we talk about rotations a lot. And what a lot of people don't, I mean, most people understand this. But when you go into the first quarter, that's usually scripted. I mean, usually the whole game scripted until about the fourth quarter. You make your adjustments, right? So you're going to get your first six minutes here, then subs come out and subs come in. Second team comes in certain rotations start happening tonight. CJ picked up about two fouls in about three minutes. It was just an ugly start and something that's not really, you know, I wanted to, you know, highlight tonight was Jose Alvarado, you know, cause usually you get like your seven. All right, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna check into the three minute mark. I don't have to be locked in right now. Jose is always locked in. He comes in instantly fills in for CJ productive hitting threes, uh, playing his ass off on defense you know, Leo, he's he's such a luxury to have now because um, mm. he stabilizes that second unit. And when, you know, things, you know, shit hits the fan, you can always trust him um, to kind of be an energy like booster. Well, you know, you said, uh, you know, we, we were talking about, uh, you know, her prior to and like not not saying that uh, Jose has the same defensive capabilities, but he's a pest. He's a nuisance and he makes life hard for opposing players. And that's. Yo, all you got to do is just come in. Kawhi Leonard said something the other night uh, when uh, after the game. They asked him, like, you know, you're coming off the bench. Like, you're Kawhi. Like, you're the claw. You're coming off the bench. And Kawhi was just like, I just got to be a star in my role. Like, whatever mm-hmm. role it is, I got to be a star in it. And I think Jose Alvarado does a good job. I think Jose Alvarado does a great job of doing it. He, 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 util- he utilizes his minutes. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He he gets everything out of those minutes that he's given. There's no like wasted anything with Jose. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't have to come back and be like, I should have did this, I should have did that. And you know, we've we always say all the time, like he's really the only point guard on the roster, right? So he's he's a second year guy, but he's wise beyond his years as far as like experience wise. Yeah, Ross. Uh, yeah, he hit it on the head there. He, he's he's getting better at understanding, I think, the offensive end. Um, you know what you're going to get in terms of energy, what he does defensively, just being a pest and stuff. But I think what you saw today was a little more um, awareness of how to play with the big guys on the offensive end. He's going to be asked to do that a little bit, whether it be injury, um, whether it be due to foul trouble. He's going to have to play with, Brandon and Zion and James not just going to be coming in with Larry and some of the other guys in the second unit. So I think seeing him kind of come in and, and, and be a little bit of a stabilizing force on the offensive end was, was important. Yeah. Last, last thing I want to take, uh, talk about, uh, then we'll get off here. Uh, we'll go Ross and Lito, uh, you know, Devontae tonight, one of four from the field. He missed a couple open looks. Um, you know, he, he, what he hasn't been great to start the year uh, and listen, it's two games in, uh, do you think that maybe, possibly, I'm not saying it's going to happen Sunday or Tuesday, do you think that Dyson, uh, Ross will go with you first, but do you think Dyson will start uh, you know, gaining some minutes there, or do you think they're going to hang with DG? No, I think I think they're probably going to hang with Devontae for, for a good little while, just simply because 
what he gives you with that unit, a little more floor spacing than, than Dyson's going to give you right now. And look, this is what Devontae's going to do. He's going to have a week where he shoots well. He's going to have a week where he doesn't really shoot well. I think, um, I think you know, the level that he understands uh, – There's, I think there's a trust factor between Willie and Devontae. And that sounds That's crazy because people are going to say, well, he hadn't played really – you know, he hadn't really played all that well since he's been here. He knows the system. He knows what's expected coming off the bench. And at this point, it's really about coming in and doing your job and making sure that everything is coordinated within that second unit. And he's going to have nights where he knocks down some shots. He's got some nights where he misses. But I don't, I don't think Dyson is ready – uh, to assume some of those sort of mid-game minutes that Devonte plays just yet, there's more learning to be done. Yeah, and and, and Lido, we've seen Willie stick with the veterans, and you know he's gonna get hit, give him his shot. But um, you know, I'd still like to see Dyson out there. I, I still think Trey needs more minutes, man. I, you know, 20 minutes tonight. I... Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be mad if you gave like some of Trey's, some of Devonte's minutes to Trey. I just don't think Dyson is. Um, is this is not a knock against right? Dyson, but. I just don't think he's ready for those minutes yet. And and especially if we go in, you know, off past history of how Willie is run his, you know, how he's treated the rookies, man. Like, you know, I would say that Devontae is playing better than G-Temp was last year. And, you know, he, he played him for a lot longer. So I'd like to see that. But before we – we got to give a shout-out to Najee. You, you got talk Najee. about him for a little bit. Talk, you got about 30 seconds. Talk about Najee. Man, Najee, Najee played well. Like, Najee came in and he, you know, he, he, he wasn't a, it's not gonna show up in a box score. Like, it's there's not, not a score. lot of, right? It's not a lot of points or, or rebounds or assists or steals you can go off there, but Najee gave effort on defense. He chased Terry Rozier around screens. He did the best he could. Like, he played well. Yeah, because, because Lito, I'm glad you brought that up because I thought Najee – and listen, I want Zion in the closing lineup and I want Trey Murphy in the, in the closing lineup, but, like, rule, like, 101, like, like as a coach, yeah. you go with the hot lineup, okay? You go with the productive lineup, and Najee came in, and I thought he gave him productive minutes. Now, I need to see Zion there in the last three minutes, and that was fine. But, Ross, I thought Najee did his job. He played his role, right? He was with Brandon, CJ, JV, uh, and Herb. And Najee didn't force any shots. He didn't take any bad shots. Defensively, he was fine. Um, you know, 30 seconds here, but what would you think of that? No, I think you hit it. The, the, I got a little frustrated with Najee for, for a few moments in the first game, actually. He, he sometimes can be a little reckless on the offensive end. And, again, it's kind of the same thing we were saying with Graham. It's, it's about understanding who you're out there with and playing your role within that group. And I thought Najee did a lot better job of that tonight, especially in the fourth quarter. He came in, he played hard. The team went on a little run. And, yeah, to your point, like when you go on a little, you know, late in the game when you stretch it from five to nine, five to 11, like you got to you just ride that. I mean, that's a wave of, of momentum that you don't want to necessarily pull it out at that point. So, no, I, I thought it was fine sticking with him. Um, I thought he gave us some good minutes there late in the fourth. Lito Ross, thanks for joining. Uh, we play on Sunday home opener against the Jazz. Go ahead, uh, Lito. You want to make one more? I was just going to say the, 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 ro the rotations tonight were, were a little sketch all around. Like the rotations were a little. Uh, I, I didn't. Okay. I didn't understand it. I, I, no, yeah. and look, and I want to before we before we shut it off because because I do agree a little bit, and we we said this though before the season started. I think Willie's got his work cut out for him. This there's a gift yeah. and a curse of having ten guys, eleven guys on your roster that can play. And this is going to be the tough part, I think, where it's going to be some of that touch and go until we – I mean, look, I hate I hate referring to this kind of stuff because I'm not wishing anybody on the team get injured. It's just a reality of playing 82 games in the NBA season. Minutes are going to open up here and there. Somebody's going to get injured. Somebody's going to, you know, have an off week, whatever it is. I think until you get to that point, you're going to have some nights like this where it's like stuff doesn't necessarily make sense because I, I, I truly think Willie's going to have to fill this out. We, we all would love to see Trey play a little more, but the, the fact of the matter is, like, the starting lineup is legit, like, yeah. real legit. And, and those guys all need yeah. 25, 30 minutes. There's just only so many to go around. But I agree with you, but that's going to be – Willie's got his work cut out for him in terms of finding the right minutes for everybody here over the next month. Yeah, and, and the whole point, like the first 10, 15, 20 games, it's all just a feel. You're trying to get yeah. the best rotations. And listen, I agree with you, Lito. I thought some of the rotations were weird tonight, um, but – to both of your points, when you have 10, 11, 12 guys that can play bat, like it's tough for a coach. You got to find minutes. So I think it's very important that he's experimenting with lineups, but also winning games. Okay. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> this is a good thing. This is a very good yeah. thing. We're critiquing rotations, but we're critiquing them with wins. When that yeah. point, 
Presented to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. NBA fans, the wait is over. Basketball is back. So tip off the season with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and Boot Crew Media. New customers can make any $5 NBA money line bet and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. I recommend you probably do Pelicans against the Jazz on Sunday. Use promo code BOOT, make any $5 bet this week, and get $200 in free bets if your team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code BOOT. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions do apply. Lito Ross, Pelicans are 2-0. and Okay, we're bitching and complaining somehow, some way, but we are 2-0. and Let's go see y'all Sunday night in the blender. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Always love to hear y'all's interactions. Y'all take care.